Thank you, and greetings to our many friends. We are happy to be able to come to you today with this telecast. We certainly hope that you'll stay with us for the next few minutes that we have. We'll be with you for 30 minutes, and certainly it's a great privilege that we have to share this time with you. We'll have a song in just a few moments, and then we'll have a message from the Word of God. And uh, certainly we trust that you'll be praying for us as we minister the Word of God here in just a few minutes. Now we have some special guests with us today. We're going to ask one of our good friends, Brother D.H. Martin. He's coming, and he's going to lead us in our opening prayer, if you will, Brother Martin. Heavenly Father, we are so glad today that we can come to the throne of grace in prayer. Lord, we thank you most of all for saving our soul. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross, shedding your blood, that we, by faith in your shed blood and the penance of our sin, could have salvation and eternal life and have a home in heaven when we leave this world. Now we pray this morning that you'll bless each one that's looking at this program today. We pray that you'll bless and have thy way in everything that's said and done uh, in this program today. We pray for Brother John as he preaches the word. We pray that you give him the message and the power to preach it, and the blessed Holy Spirit of God will have his way uh, in this whole situation today. We pray that you'll bless the church and bless all that are interested in the salvation of their soul we pray that you convict those that are lost and by the hearing of the word of the gospel of the lord jesus christ that they'll come to know jesus as their personal savior and we'll thank you and praise you for all you do for us for we pray and ask it all in jesus precious name amen amen thank you brother martin for that good prayer there now we have another good friend here brother Jack Hood, and we're going to ask Brother Jack to give us a word or two of testimony. We're glad to have you, Jack, and I know you love the Lord, and you give us a few words. Brother John, I'm thankful that I've been allowed this opportunity to testify for the Lord. Some 25 years ago today, I've been saved, and I hadn't been sorry of it yet, and I'm sure that I won't. And if there's one lost soul out in television area that's listening to us today, we pray that today will be the day that you'll turn to the Lord and be saved. All right. Thank you, Brother Jack Good, for that good uh, word of testimony there. And how wonderful it is to know that Jesus Christ is your Savior and to know that you have been born again by the wonderful Spirit of God and how we praise God for the opportunity that we have to worship and serve Him. Now we have... Uh, uh, Brother Tim here with us, and we're going to ask him now to come around, and he's going to give us a number in song at this time, and we feel that it'll be a great blessing to you. God bless you as he sings. to God in earnest, 
And not caring what folks said, I was hungry for the blessing. My poor soul, it must be fed. When at last by faith I touched him, and like sparks from smitten still, just so quick salvation reached me. Oh, bless God, I know it's real. But it's real, it's real. Oh, I know it's real. Praise God, the doubts are Thank you, Tim. That was a wonderful song. I'm sure that everybody enjoyed that. At least I hope so. And just in a few moments, we're going to be uh, bringing you a short message on that wonderful life that you have if you know the Lord. And if you don't know him, then certainly uh, we trust that you'll get acquainted with him today. Now, we have a couple of little things here we would like to offer you. Uh, first, we have uh, three pieces of gospel literature, tracks that we would like to give you free and postpaid if you'll just give us a call and our number will be on the screen there for you. It's much easier to call than it is to write. So if you'll just give us a call, we'll be glad to mail you these three pieces of gospel literature. They'll come free and postpaid without any question. Two of them is on the plan of salvation and one of them is a bookmarker and it has the fundamentals of the faith listed on it with some other helpful uh, scripture references. And I certainly hope that you'll call us right now. If the line is busy, call us right back. And I'm sure that you'll get through to us. Then we thought you might be interested in some tapes we have. We have a lot of tapes, but we have a couple today we'd like to offer you. Uh, if you'd care for them, you give us a call, and we'd be glad to mail them to you. We have a tape here uh, on the three enemies of the Christian. The Christian has some enemies. And we have one on three enemies of the Christian. Also, we have one here on spare tire religion. Uh, everybody ought to have that tape on spare tire religion. On the other side, we have a message on the unpardonable sin. We tell you exactly what the Word of God says the unpardonable sin is. I wish you'd call us, and if you'd send us a donation of 3 or $4 just to cover the expense of the tape, we'd be glad to mail them to you. So you just give us a call and we'll put them right in the mail to you. So let us hear from you if we can be any help to you. All right, now let us go for a few minutes to the Word of God. And I want to bring a message today that will help you as Christian people, I sincerely hope. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, let us notice what the Word says. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, there's three things that we have brought out in this scripture today. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And then we find that old things have passed away. That is the old life. But first of all, if a man is in Christ Jesus, certainly he has heard the gospel call. He has experienced the new birth, which is the spiritual birth. Thank God for the spiritual birth. There are some people that still believe, uh, as Christ told Nicodemus, that you must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. So if a man is in Christ Jesus, he has experienced the new birth. Next, he has passed from death to life if he is in Christ Jesus. John 5 and 24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that 
heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life. So says the word of God. So a man has passed from death whereas he was dead in trespasses and sins. Now Paul said to the Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, And you has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Now before a man saved, he's, he is spiritually dead. Death is separation. That means that he is separated from God. And he has uh, no connection with God when he's in sin. But when he turns to God and God delivers him, then he is quickened by the Spirit, made alive, and uh, therefore he belongs to God. And then next, if a man... Uh, is in Christ Jesus, he doesn't, lose, he doesn't love sin anymore. Uh, he's been cut loose from the bondage and the shackles of sin. And uh, therefore, he doesn't love sin. Thank God for those that are in Christ Jesus who has lost their appetite for sin. Brother, if you want to get a man to live right and do right, get him saved, get him born again, get his sins under the blood. Then if a man is in Christ Jesus, he has a different attitude about other people. I know a fellow one time, uh, back many years ago, a few years ago, uh, that was a bootlegger. He made liquor. And the uh, fellow that lived next door to him was a deacon. He hated, despised uh, this deacon. He didn't like him. Boy, he had a bad attitude about the deacon. But one day he went to an old-fashioned revival meeting and gave his heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what he did? He went back and got the deacon, went down to the steel, got the deacon to help him, cut up his steel, and he went out of business. Well, that's what it'll do. He had a different attitude about the deacon after he got saved. Reminded me of a man one time was going to give uh, some folks a piece of property uh, to build a church. And uh, he said only one little catch. He named a man in this community that if he should ever enter this church door, then I want the property back. Well... Needless to say, they didn't take the property. But if he'd have got saved, then he would have had a different attitude toward other people. But you see, when people get saved and their lives are changed and they belong to God, then they have a different attitude toward people. That's what God can do for people. Well, his concern is changed from earthly things to heavenly things. He becomes more heavenly minded, more spiritually minded when he's in Christ Jesus. No wonder people live worldly today and uh, want to live in sin. That's why an old hog, he loves slop because he's a hog. A sinner loves sin because he's a sinner. But if he gets right with God, then he'll love the things that belong to God. So uh, his interest changes a whole lot when he comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, if any man be in Christ, he loves the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you know, a man is out here, he's in sin. Once he gets saved, he don't realize the real value of being a Christian and what the gospel is all about. The gospel is the death and the burial and the resurrection of the Son of God. So if a man is in Christ Jesus, he loves the gospel. Man, I mean, he loves it. He likes to go to church on Sunday and feast up on a good old-fashioned gospel message or turn his television on and hear some good preacher that loves God, that gives out the word. Well, he loves the gospel. He knows the real joy. If a man be in Christ Jesus, he knows the real joy in serving the Lord. You know there's joy in serving God. Look over here in Acts chapter 8, I believe it is. Acts chapter 8, we find where Philip went down into the city of Samaria. And verse 8 reads like this, And there was great joy in that city. Now there was a man named Simon that had went down there, gave out that he was something great and had all of the people believing in him. That reminds me of a lot of people in our day, uh, that he was something great. They all gave heed. They believed that he was the great power of God. Uh, but when old Phillips went down there and began to preach Jesus unto them, then they believed, and the Bible said in verse 8, there was joy in that city. Now that's what the Lord does for you when you're in Christ Jesus. If a man is in, if a man is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. He has the joy of knowing that he has heard the word of God. There is joy in knowing that you have repented of your sins. There is joy in knowing that you have heard the truth. There is joy in knowing that your sins have been forgiven. 
and that you know that Jesus Christ is your Savior, there's real joy in knowing that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. If a man be in Christ Jesus, he learns the joy of serving and living for God. A lot of people out in sin, they say, well, you know, this is the way I like it, and I love it this way. They don't really realize, you don't really realize the joy and the peace and the satisfaction that goes uh, with serving our Christ, living for Him. He knows the real joy of having life, spiritual life. Well, you know, when we come to the Lord, uh, He gives us spiritual life. We are spiritually born. We are united uh, to the body of Christ, and certainly we belong to Him. We have the real joy in knowing that Christ is there. Well, not only that, if we in Christ, but if we in Christ, then we have experienced the new birth. Now, some people today, they wonder about what the new birth's all about. Uh, you ask some people, if you're a Christian, well, I joined the church. I belong to a church and I've been baptized. Well, that doesn't make a Christian out of it. Uh, to be baptized and not know the Lord Jesus Christ only makes you a wet sinner. That's all it does for you. You just go in the pool, a dry one, and come out a wet one. But when you go down on your knees, you become brokenhearted, and you know that you're a sinner. You see yourself as God sees you, know you're a sinner, and know that you need life, and need life more abundantly, like John 10 and 10 said, uh, that he come to give us abundant life, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Well, when you get that, then you get something that's worth living for. Thank God today for the more abundant life. Well... If a man is in Christ Jesus and he's a new creature, he has a new birth, spiritual birth, uh, born spiritually, not just uh, uh, turned over a new leaf, not just reformed, not just deciding to do better, but spiritually born, begotten by the Word of God. Then he has a new nature according to 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. It's a divine nature. You wonder why people can't love God? They're not saved. You get saved and it becomes just as natural for you to love God as it does for a little child to love his parents. And how wonderful it is when we are born again and we are a new creature in Christ Jesus, we have a new birth, we have a new nature, and then not only that, but we have a new spirit. And this is what makes the difference. You know, the spiritual birth, uh, the divine nature, and then the spirit. In John 8 and 9, he says that if any man have not the spirit of Christ, that he is none of his. And then he said, But as many as are led by the Spirit of Christ, uh, they are his. That's in uh, verse 14. Those that are led by the Spirit, they belong to God. So a man has a new spirit when he comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. A new creature? Yes. A new birth? Yes. A new nature? Yes. A new spirit? Yes. What does the Spirit do? Well, he empowers us. He quickens us. He makes us alive. He leads us. Well, when you've got the spiritual leadership, uh, you don't live in the gutter of sin anymore. He leads you and directs you in paths of righteousness for the namesakes of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And how wonderful it is to know that the Spirit of God dwells within. Well, Paul said this old bo uh, body of ours is a tabernacle of the Holy Ghost anyway. And uh, then next we have a new master. In Romans chapter 6, we find that we are not under the old master anymore, but we under a new master. As you serve sin, then uh, you was a slave and uh, it was your master, but when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior, then you have a new master. Being, uh, have, uh, being a new creature in Christ Jesus, you have a new master. Then if you have a new master, you have a new desire. In Romans 10 and verse one, uh, Paul says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Well, what kind of a desire does a man have if he has, uh, if he's a new creature? He has a new desire. He has a desire to worship God. He has a desire to go to church. He has a desire to pray. He has a desire to worship. He has a desire to live right. The best way I know to get a man to live right is to get right. Get right on the inside, and then he can begin to live right. So it pays to get right. It pays to live right. Thank God uh, for that great desire 
that he gives us. Yes, we ought to have a desire as Paul did. Now, Paul had a desire to see uh, Israel saved. We in America ought to have a desire to see America saved. Not only that, but we ought to have a desire to live for our Heavenly Father. We ought to have a desire to live the spiritual life. If a man is a new creature, he has a desire to live right. Well, there's no question about that. You might say, well, I, I've never felt that way. Well, you ought to get saved and try. You'll have a different feeling when you get saved. Well, the reason some people can't live right and do right, they've never been made right to start with. You get started right, then you can wind up right. Well, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he has a new desire. Not only does he have a new desire, but bless the Lord, he has a new love. He tells us in John 13 and 35 that uh, by this shall all men know that you are my disciple. If you have love one for another. Isn't that wonderful? Well, you know, God is love. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Isn't that wonderful? Well, that's real love. We love him because he first loved us. We couldn't love him at all had it not been for him loving us. But he loves us, and therefore we have a new love. Well, you don't expect a man to love church and to love God if he doesn't belong to God. Uh, we wonder, well, why? Why in the world is it you can't get people to go to church nowadays? Well, get them saved, and you don't have that problem. It's these people that don't know God, or either they've backslid and got out of the will of God, they've got no willpower, They've got no want to. And these kind of people, you have to sort of use them like a wheelbarrow. You have to push them along to get anything out of them. Well, there's a new love. Those that are made a new creature in Christ Jesus, they have a new love. Well, you can understand the man out here. He lives in sin. He don't know God. He drinks. He gambles. He hobnobs around in sin, lives worse than the devil would want him to live. But uh, you can't expect a man like that to love God. But once he turns from sin and turns to God, and has the love of God placed in his heart, then he can love him. He has a new love. Why, well, I know before I got saved, it was hard to get this old boy in church because there wasn't anything down there for me. But when I got saved and the Lord Jesus Christ came into my heart, then there was a lot of good down at the church. Somebody asked me one time, said, what good do you get out of going to church anyway? Well, if you're saved, you get a lot of good out of going there. Uh, it's a great joy to go and to sing and to preach and to pray and to rejoice in the Lord. Well, not only that, but we have new joy. Some people say, well, I'd like to be a Christian, but I got so many wild oats to sow. Well, you got so many wild oats to reap too. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. But let me tell you something. There is a new joy that sweeps over your soul when you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. That's what 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17 said, that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He automatically right then and there becomes a new creature. And he has that new joy. Not only does he have new joy, but he has new satisfaction. People run to and fro. They're dissatisfied. They're hunting. They're searching. They don't know what they're looking for. There's something out there in this world that they're looking for and searching. I did the same thing. I couldn't move around fast enough before Jesus Christ saved me. But when he saved me, there was a calmness and a sweet satisfaction that moved over my soul like I never had before. Not only that does he have satisfaction, but bless the Lord, he has a new father. You know, John 8 and 44 said, Ye are of your father, and the lust of him, that's what you're going to do. But God is our father over and over and over again. Uh, John 14 and verse 6, I believe it is, he said, uh, that no man cometh unto the father except by me. That's what Jesus told the disciples there. No man cometh unto the father except by me. So we have a new father. We love him. We want to listen to him. We want him to control and to rule our lives. And we don't belong to the devil anymore. Oh, I'm so glad today that I don't belong to the devil. I'm so glad today that I belong to God and I've got a new father. The devil's not my father today. He don't have to be yours either if you'll turn to God today. You can be saved. You can get on the phone right now and call us, if you will, and just call us at the number there. You take our phone number down and give us a call and we'll pray with you right today or we'll do anything that we can to help you find the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you have a new work, new food, new responsibilities, a new outlook on life, a new hope, 
It's a glorious hope to have that hope in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not only that, but we'll have a new home. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. Remember that, dear friends, today. One day you're going to have to meet God. Let me tell you something. You're going to have to meet God three places. You're going to meet Him in this life. You're going to meet Him in death. You're going to meet Him in judgment. So why not get prepared and why not get ready to do something about it today? Did you know today that you could have salvation? Did you know today that you can turn to God? Did you know that right now you can call upon Him and He can save your soul? Give us a call and we'll help you. And the Lord wants to help you. And uh, all you got to do is just call us the number there that you see and God will help you today and God will save your very soul. All right, Tim is coming around and he's going to sing a number as we leave you today. But as he, as he sings, you get on your knees there and you call upon God and God can help you. In Jesus' name, amen. Watch and pray, find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. in Jesus Christ. I am the righteousness of God.